Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the task force for inviting me to speak with you today about the role of transportation infrastructure in driving racial inequality. I really do appreciate the breadth of the testimony that you've been seeking over the course of your work to address slavery and its legacy. Slavery was a system of theft. It was theft of life as people were stolen, enslaved and brutalized. Slavery was theft of property through forced labor. It was theft of identity and home as people were repeatedly ripped from the community and culture that are really central to human experience. And it was theft of happiness, dignity, and potential. And slavery became imprinted onto the DNA of the nation and really remains the foundation of racial inequality. And after the abolition of slavery, new systems of white supremacy evolved in its place to continue the theft and exploitation that were at slavery's core. And today I'm gonna to speak briefly about the role that highways have played in sustaining slavery's legacy, adding to what we just heard from uh, Dr. Appleyard. So transportation infrastructure has always been a driver of racial inequality. The benefits and burdens of our transportation system from highways to roads, bridges, sidewalks, and as we just heard, public transportation have been planned, developed, sustained to pull resources from black communities resources that were subsequently redeployed and invested to the benefit of predominantly white communities and their residents. And this system is really a daily reminder of how black people and black communities have been and continue to be sacrificed uh, to feed America's growth and expansion. White middle class and affluent neighborhoods are favored at the expense of black communities producing lopsided and skewed patterns of infrastructure development. And although our transportation racism is no longer marked by the kind of explicit racial divisions that we saw in the past, it continues to entrench racial segregation, limit access to jobs, health, and opportunity, force black people and black communities to bear a disproportionate share of environmental harms and other burdens, and to extract wealth from black communities and black people. Safe, accessible, reliable infrastructure is disproportionately built in white neighborhoods, connecting those residents to opportunity while black communities continue to suffer from underdevelopment. Um, and as I said today, I wanna to highlight the specific role of our, our system of highways because the, the officials who built the interstate highway system in the 1950s and 1960s were often motivated explicitly by racism and placed little value on black lives, black families, and black communities. And by the time the interstate highway system was completed in the early 1970s, it had fundamentally restructured urban America. And in almost every region of the country, the new um, interstate highway system uprooted, displaced, and isolated hundreds of thousands of people. The United States Department of Transportation estimated that more than 475,000 households and more than a million people were displaced nationwide as a direct result of federal highway building. Many people think those numbers um, are low, but layered on top of that, many more people were displaced by state highway projects. And then after the bulldozers left, millions of additional people were left living in hollowed out communities. The property that was taken, the neighborhoods that were destroyed, the businesses that were lost, and the families that were displaced were overwhelmingly black. And this was by design. The nation's highways were built through and around black communities, destroying them along with the homes, businesses, and lives in those communities and created physical barriers uh, to integration. So these highways served as walls and wedges and extractors in black communities around the country. So first, the highways as a tool of removal. In states around the country, highway construction displaced black households, but really cut the heart and soul out of thriving black communities as homes, churches, schools, and businesses were destroyed. And in some communities, the highway became the tool that white government officials and white residents had been looking for for years to displace those black communities. The destruction of a black community to make way for I-95 in um, the Overtown section of Miami, Florida, I think provides an example of how construction of the highway was often used to actualize a racial agenda to destroy vibrant and economically self-sufficient black communities. 
So I-95 tore through the center of Overtown, which was a large and, as I said, vibrant black community, then considered to be the center of economic and cultural life for black people living in Miami. And it was the realization of a decades long campaign by white business leaders to remove black residents and claim that land to expand Miami's central business, business district. And by the late 1960s, Overtown was dominated by the highway. And there was really no evidence at all of why it was once called the Harlem of the South. Really no corner of Overtown was saved. And although nearly 40,000 black people lived in Overtown before the highway expansion, only about 8,000 remained in the hollowed out community after the highway was built. Uh, similarly in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a black community known as the Hill District was devastated in order to build I-579. And when I-579 opened to traffic, it had effectively cut off the Hill District from Pittsburgh's thriving downtown area and displaced thousands of black residents. The population of the Hill District dropped from about 54,000 in 1950 to about 9,000 in 2013, and more than 400 businesses were lost. And you really cannot overstate the impact of this kind of wealth extraction. And the community was essentially dammed, and today about 40% of the Hill District's residents live below the poverty line. In communities around the country, some people who could not or did not want to move remained in those hollowed out communities adjacent to the highway, trying to rebuild and having lost value in their homes as well. And those communities and their residents also bear the marks of decades of accumulated disadvantage. Highway building gutted the economic core of these communities and killed off a generation of businesses. The elimination of black owned businesses through displacement deeply impacted uh, segregated communities that were already deprived of economic investment. Ownership of homes and businesses is really critical um, in building generational wealth. And highway projects rob black people of those resources and those opportunities. Uh, and second, and very importantly, the highway was a tool of a segregationist agenda that erected a post Jim Crow wall that separated white and black communities. It protected white people from black migration and it further entrenched racial segregation and walled off economic opportunity. So instead of going through black communities, some highways just encircled them to contain and confine black residents. And they were assisted by existing racial segregation patterns, redlining, and the racial zoning laws that were rampant at that time. So highway builders were able to build highways on previously formal or informal boundary lines between white and black neighborhoods and skirt legal prohibitions on racial discrimination at the time. And this was often accomplished at the explicit request of white residents who feared integration. And then finally, I will note that the erection of highways between black and white communities or these structures that encircled black communities sent a clear message of racial hierarchy. This kind of government imposed segregation was a show of power of white people over the lives of black people, ensuring black people understood what they believed uh, was their place. And these examples are just the tip of the iceberg. Virtually every state has a story about a highway destroying a black community. Um, and, and of course, this includes California, where throughout the 1940s to the 1960s, the selection of routes for major transportation corridors in cities like Los Angeles and Fresno and Oakland had a direct and devastating impact on black communities. One of the most well-known examples is uh, Sugar Hill. The history of Sugar Hill illustrates a shining example of how removing quote unquote slums uh, was often blatantly pretextual, offering an excuse for the state to target black neighborhoods and pursue an anti-black agenda. Sugar Hill was of course named after the legendary neighborhood in Harlem, and it was the heart of cosmopolitan life for many uh, bl affluent black people who lived in Los Angeles. And black people fought for their right to live in this community and only won that right after white residents of the neighborhood unsuccessfully sued to enforce racially restrictive covenants. But that victory was of course short lived because in the early 1960s, Sugar Hill was bisected by the new Santa Monica Freeway, with the government seizing homes through eminent domain and providing really inadequate compensation. And at the time, it was reported that the freeway was routed through Sugar Hill 
um, in order to save fraternity and sorority row um, in the area around USC. And this kind of destruction has really had lasting impacts. Communities like Sugar Hill or the Pico neighborhood in Santa Monica and the families who live there often bear the burdens of decades of accumulated disadvantage. Racial segregation, concentrated poverty, uh, economic isolation, and they have lasting impacts on economic mobility, wealth creation, health, uh, community stability. And of course, the interstate highway system did not cause every problem facing urban communities, nor did it really single-handedly create wealth inequality. But it did compound discrimination, exclusion, and exploitation. <clears throat> and I think it triggered a process that weakened black neighborhoods and robbed black communities and black people of wealth. So while the highways connected white people living in suburbia with economic opportunities in the city, black residents were excluded from those white neighborhoods. And when the highways destroyed their homes, paying them little or nothing for the destruction of their most valuable asset. Black residents were forced to find new housing in communities that were already intensely segregated by race and class, further entrenching racial segregation and taxing inadequate housing, employment, um, and public services. So in the end, highway construction destroyed black communities and corralled black people away from opportunity, contributing to today's intense racial segregation, concentrated racialized poverty, and created physical, economic, and psychological barriers that persist to this day. I think there are several ways to right the wrongs of the past, including direct payments for home and businesses that were lost, for people's homes that were, were taken uh, without compensation, for businesses taken without compensation, or for homes or businesses that were taken for very little compensation. And it also includes opportunities and support, and support for displaced residents or their descendants to return to those communities, to live in those communities, to build businesses in those communities. Uh, it could include deep and sustained investment in impacted communities. Uh, also, as Dr. Appleyard mentioned, it can include doing the work of removing or recessing highways and, and trying to weave communities back together again. And finally, ensuring that black communities are not targeted again as we enter a period of widespread infrastructure development. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you for your time.